Thank you. I know that uh, we worship the Creator, but not creation. Okay, so the question is, we should only worship the Creator and not the creation. So my dear sister is asking, what does creation mean? So anything besides the Creator is the creation. As simple as that, right? So anything that we know, which is not God, is the creation of God. So that is the most important belief that we say every single prophet came to invite people, their people, to the worship only of the Creator, not of humans each other, or the animals, the plants, the trees, the animals, only the Creator Himself. So in Arabic, that concept of submission only to the Creator is Islam. That's what it means, yes. In the back, right there in the back, yes. Can you repeat the question, please? Yeah, yeah, I'm Thank doing you. it, yes. I drive by um, at random times throughout the day and evening, and um, the mosque. Okay, wonderful. So, so the sister is asking the question or the observation is that uh, when we pray five times a day, do we go with the Mecca time? Definitely not, because we'll be like praying all night, right? <laughs> it is like what six, seven, eight, nine hours ahead of us. So we go with the time here in Dallas. Uh, obviously, there's an app for it, right? So we go with that. So the very first prayer, so we pray five times a day, right? We pray five times a day. The very first prayer is uh, from dawn just before sunrise. That's the prayer slot, first prayer. The second prayer is the early afternoon prayer, late afternoon prayer, right after sunset and when it becomes dark. So when I'm in Chicago, I go with the Chicago time and anywhere any person is in the world, they go with that. Yeah, so those are the time slots that we go with, yes. It's a good question, good observation. So a Muslim is uh, encouraged to come to the mosque and pray because Islam is really good about unity and brotherhood and humanity coming together, worshipping the one creator. If I pray in my office or at my home, I do get certain reward, but by coming and praying in the mosque, the reward is multiplied by 27 times. So just imagine if your teacher tells you, if you do this homework this way, you get, you know, like some points. If you do it this other way, in the school maybe, you get like 27 times more points, right? I would rush to do that homework in, in the school. So God is so merciful, so rewarding. Yes. So are those points like indulgences in the Catholic faith? I grew up in a Catholic school, so I don't practice anymore. So are you going to get them faster? <laughs> yeah, those are the extra brownie points. Yes, why not? You know, because our ultimate goal that we say is to please the Creator, follow the commandments, uh, better the humanity, accumulate uh, as many rewards as possible. So when we go to paradise, we don't want to go to the lowest level of paradise. We want to go. To, we want to go to the highest level of paradise, right? Because anything that we do in this world, we want the best. The best homes, the best cars, the best phones. So obviously we want to be in the best place. So we want as many rewards as possible. But ultimately it's not by the actions, it is by the mercy of God a person goes to paradise. Very good question. Yes, sister, go ahead. Uh, well, uh, as a Christian, I believe that the Okay, wonderful question. So my sister is asking the question that according to uh, the Christian faith, uh, that people are saved by the blood of Jesus, that he was hung on the cross or crucified on the cross, and then he took the sins of humanity. What about Islam and Muslims? What does, how does God save, right? Salvation in Islam. So salvation in Islam, according to chapter 2, verse number 25, is personal accountability. If the person uh, has the right belief and do good deeds, God's mercy comes into play, then the, into play the person goes to paradise like that. So we say that God is a fair and a just creator. So suppose if I drive over the speed limit, you should not be getting that ticket, I should be, right? Is that right? Or would you give her the ticket if I do? No, that will not be fair, correct? 
So in the same way, what we say is, if we do commit any crime, any ill, then we have to repent to the Creator, and then God can save us, right? So there are five conditions for a person to be erased of their sins. First and foremost, we have to realize that we have committed the sin. We have to acknowledge it. Secondly, we have to sincerely approach the Creator and repent to Him alone. So there is no confession. If somebody commits the sin, we go and do, does somebody come to you for confession of sins? Nobody comes to Him, right? We directly, we approach the Creator. Number three, there is no mediator between us and God, according to Islam. We say that God is all-knowing, God is all-hearing, so we don't need to go through anyone. We can go directly to God for the, uh, for the repentance. Number fourth is, we should make the commitment not to do it again. And number fifth important one is, we should, give, we should do some extra good deeds, extra charity. So these are the five conditions, but the most important thing is that God can forgive the sins, any sin that we have, by direct repentance. But there is only one sin, if a person dies with that, God says he's not going to uh, forgive. That is the sin of associating partners with God. That means if a person is worshipping the creation, despite getting educated about the right knowledge, and dies with that, that is the only unpardonable sin in Islam. So according to Islam, it's not by the death and the crucifixion of anyone, it is by direct repentance to the Creator. Before we start uh, taking more questions, inshallah, let's, let's start two or three tables, inshallah, start serving lunch, inshallah, that lunch is ready to be served. As we continue to ask questions. Yeah, so what we can do is maybe the last two or three tables, you can go and get the lunch and sit down, and we can keep on taking the questions too, all right? Yes, go ahead, brother. In Islam, why are no images of Muhammad allowed? You know, in Christianity, we have pictures of Jesus everywhere. Okay, so the question is. Why are images of Muhammad, peace be upon him, not allowed, even though in Christianity, there are images of Jesus all over the place? Okay, so really important reason is, so the biggest sin is Islam is idol worship, or worshipping of the creation, right? So anything that leads a person towards the direction of associating partners, we want to stop at the very first step. So we say that in the history of humanity, this is what happened. Many, many like centuries ago, there used to be three pious people in one region of the world. This is the true story, by the way. So what happened was, after they passed away, to recognize those people, their followers, they started to make three images of those individuals. Not to worship them, not to take them as mediators, but just to recognize them, right, and honor them. After this generation was gone, those three images they became the mediators between that, those people and God. After one more generation, God became out of the picture and these uh, three images, they were replaced as God himself. So to remove Muslims from going towards idol worship, we don't even want to make any image or any depiction, not only of Muhammad, peace be upon him, even of Jesus and Moses, any prophet, any human. So for that reason, when you come to the mosque, when you get a tour of the mosque, you will not find any symbols. Symbols of either prophet or any symbol. Islam is a symbol-less religion. We say when we have to worship the creator, we don't go through any symbols. We worship God directly without any mediator. Okay, question. She doesn't need a mic. <laughs> okay, why do we pray five times a day? Uh, because Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he used to pray five times a day, right? So that's number one. Number two is, a simple analogy is this. Just when we have to nourish our bodies, we have to eat certain number of times. Some people eat more, some less. But we do eat certain number of times to nourish our body. We say we have to take break from our busy life to connect with the Creator at least five times a day, right? And, uh, you know, this is, yes. You know, just like we have, to, we have to charge our batteries like maybe every night so it can be like, you know, nice and fresh. When we say that when we pray five times a day, it is like taking a break 
reconnecting with the creator and now realizing you know there is a creator what is the purpose of life god is watching uh, we have to do good all the time there would be accountability so it gives us a source of reflection connection with the creator right so all of these are wonderful reasons and benefits that why muslims we pray at least five times a day but besides the five times the formal prayers a muslim can pray any other time i mean i can pray right now in english language that oh god bring justice and peace and unity to all of humanity remove the oppression from all over the world help us to live as brothers and sisters so i can pray any time anywhere uh, so the five daily prayers these are the five formal uh, acts of worship yes brother yes sister uh, my question is about fasting why do muslims fast during ramadan okay so the question is why do muslims fast right in the month of ramadan the reason muslims fast because it says in chapter 2 of the quran verse number 183 that oh you who believe fast uh, so you can uh, attain fast in this month just like people before you fasted so you can attain the closeness to god or the consciousness of god right so we are fasting for one reason number one reason because it's an obligation second reason it it creates a discipline for us when we are fasting from dawn to sunset uh, we realize you know the wonderful blessings that god has given to us that we take for granted when a person fast we can place ourselves in the shoes of a person who may go to hungry without any food you know there are billions of people all around us who may not have enough to eat you know we are just taking our lunch for granted here people billions of people they don't have enough to eat so when i'm fasting i can place myself in the shoes of a person uh, who is hungry so i can reach out in my pocket and i can donate more right and really important that uh, fasting uh, is not only fasting from uh, you know food and water and sex fasting is also from any wrong things we are not supposed to be doing anyway lying and cheating and breaking promises and backbiting we are not supposed to be doing that anyway so we should be fasting from all the wrong things and fasting is also inculcating all the good things that i should be doing all throughout my life so we should be increasing the good deeds too so fasting for 30 days is like a boot camp right once i do fasting for 30 days inshallah god willing i will come back as a person who is transformed as a better muslim right as a better husband as a better father as a better neighbor and as a better human that is the reason for fasting in islam yes. question oh sorry one then i'll come to you yes hello uh, thank you uh, as you have mentioned in the the better gentleman mentioned this one is about peace okay like, are they doing something wrong okay wonderful so your question is that if islam is a faith of peace how come there is warfare how come there are certain groups which are killing other people right murdering and torturing and occupation so where is the disparity why is there a disparity between the faith and the people what is your name brother huh oh christian christian is asking about islam all right <laughs> all right uh, so do you think it is fair for anyone to judge any faith by the bad apples in the followers we should not right so for that reason we say that islam is perfect muslims are imperfect so for me to learn about christianity i'm not going to go to kkk should i i should not right i should not judge christianity mr christian uh, by uh, by looking into the crusaders uh the slave traders the spanish inquisition and the brovik in the name of christianity who slaughtered 78 people by the by the eradication of the native americans over here i should never judge christianity by the actions of the fallible christians in the same way no person should judge the faith of islam which we say and which is peaceful based upon justice and fairness and unity based upon the actions of some bad apples of the followers of islam 
if you need to know what Islam is, obviously we need to pick up the Quran which is the source of Islam. Look into the noble life of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Uh, they have been Jews and Christians. You know, for example, right now in India, there are atrocities going on on the people of India by some Hindus on the Muslims, Christians and people of minority. I will not judge Hinduism based upon those, uh, those Hindus who are doing the atrocities. Right now as we speak, in the Myanmar, they have been Buddhists, some of them, they are coming atrocities on the innocent Muslims. I will not judge Buddhism on the, on the actions of those Buddhists. Right now as we speak, there are some Jewish people, some of them, they are doing atrocities on the Muslim Palestinians and the Muslim Christians. I would never judge Judaism on the actions of those Jewish people. So for us to know what Islam is, we should judge Islam by looking into the Quran and the noble life of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Okay, so the sister is asking, the Pentecost is an important event in Christianity. How does Islam uh, understand or say, what does it, Islam say about Pentecost? So, our source book is not uh, the Old Testament or the New Testament, even though we respect it. Our source book of Islam is the Quran and the practices of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So, Quran does not say anything about the Pentecost. Muhammad, peace be upon him, did not say anything about the Pentecost. So, for that reason, we don't say anything about Pentecost that it happened or did not happen because uh, our source of Islam is not the New Testament or the book of Acts. It is the 114 chapters of the Quran and the sayings of Muhammad, peace be upon him. Yes. But if you have a follow-up question to that, I would be more than happy. Anything? Okay. Yes, sister, go ahead. Yeah. So go ahead. I can listen. I can repeat the question. Yes. Okay. Sure, sure. So let's take this question, then I will come to him, okay? Alright, so the question is, this is an important question, that why don't Muslim women pray with the Muslim men? Alright? So the reason is that in the mosque of Muhammad, peace be upon him, there is a segregation between the men who prayed in the front and women they pray in the back. So the number one reason is we are following the sunnah or the practices of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, right? That's number one. Number two can be, it can be for the sake of purity of the heart and mind. You know, when we pray, we pray literally shoulder to shoulder, touching each other. So, you know, suppose if the one of the men over here, if there is like a pretty lady, you know, standing next to him, shoulder to shoulder, right? Where would the thought of the mind of the man be? Up there or next to him, right? When we go to a Jewish synagogue, an ultra-Orthodox Jewish synagogue, you see separation. When we, when we go to a Greek Orthodox church, there is a segregation, right? Again, for the purity of thought and mind, it should only be to God. And that's the way Muhammad, peace be upon him, in his mosque, there used to be segregation, right? Last but not the least, the way that Muslims pray, we bow down, we prostrate, right? So it will not be for the sake of decency and modesty. If a lady is in the front praying in front of men, you know, bowing down and kneeling, it will not be, you know, good and uh, decent. For any and all of these reasons, we say that uh, there is a segregation. But segregation does not mean that males will get more reward because they are in the front. We have females less reward, no. They both get equal reward. We are worshipping the one creator. We are worshipping the same way. Segregation is the purity of the thoughts. Wonderful question, yes. One second, I'll come to you. One question from there, yes. After him, after him, no, 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 go ahead. Then we come in the front here. Yes, go ahead. Muslim, my friend, he's not, he's atheist. He doesn't know my question is that he says that how do you believe uh, Angel Jabril came down to uh, make the Quran, like to give the Prophet Sallallahu How do you believe that the angel actually came down? Okay, fine. So, so our young brother up there, he's an atheist, right? <clears throat> and he's saying that, you know, how do we believe? 
that an angel came and that angel gave the Quran to Muhammad peace be upon him that is Kanam how can we believe that so what we say is that Quran itself it's a miracle the way the Quran was composed the way Quran was given down uh, Quran makes many many challenges many prophecies Quran has historical facts Quran has scientific facts so when we combine all of them together we say that Quran is a book that could never have been written by any human it is coming from the Creator so that credible book that credible witness is witnessing that Muhammad peace be upon him he received the revelation directly from God the very first time when the angel came to Muhammad peace be upon him but if he wants to know more details I would be around I can converse with your friend all right good question uh, right there in the front yeah right there everything God created is creation right? humans, animals, plants everything is creation why and mosques are portrayals of animals and humans for business but you have leads and hours and dimes that know the creation also Okay, so the question is why there is no depiction of the animals or so, right, in the mosque? Why only the nature, the trees, and the flowers? Same to what I mentioned to that sister, because sometimes, you know, we may start with good intention, but it may lead towards something else. So once we start focusing and depicting, you know, animals and uh, humans, then people start giving more importance to them eventually that may lead towards associating partners so to avoid doing that we stop at the very first step to begin with so for that reason there is no depiction of any animal any human any prophet in the mosque so islam is a symbol less faith because we don't want to go towards the biggest sin which is associating partners anything that leads us towards it we want to stop at the very first step that does not mean that Islam does not like animals and the birds and the plants we love them they're all the creation of God to such a degree you'll be surprised to find out you know one time a lady who committed many many sins she was about to get some water from the well and next to her was a dog who was really thirsty so she took the water and she gave the water to the dog instead of you know drinking herself first God loved that lady so much that act he forgave her sins so in humanity we are supposed to be not just good towards humans we are supposed to be the best even towards all the animals and the whole creation yes ma'am um, so she was she explained to me why a Muslim man can marry up to four women, mm. right? But one of the women, if they are not happy and they demand divorce, can she remarry again? Okay, fine. So the question is, suppose if the marriage is a polygamous marriage and one of the wives of the Muslim male, if she is not happy with the marriage, then obviously she can initiate the divorce and she has to go through the process and then she can leave the marriage and yes definitely she can remarry definitely she can remarry with the process that Islam encourages right so this is not just about the polygamous relationship for any relationship if the, if the lady or the man is not happy they can initiate the divorce process and that person can remarry Islam allows that unlike I think Catholicism she cannot remarry Right? If you go with the Bible, in the Gospel of Matthew, she cannot remarry. In Islam, she can remarry. Yes. So a man marry a woman doesn't have to be a virgin? No. The lady does not have to be a virgin for a Muslim man to marry her. So what we can do now is, uh, after you're all done, after you're all done eating, we are going to give a, a tour of the mosque. Muslims are going to pray our second prayer of the day but before you leave make sure we have a gift bag 
right? We have gift bags up there or for everyone, or free? No, just one for members. Hmm? Okay, so we have, uh, we have uh, all the brochures and the copies of the Quran. All of you can take one and read on your own. That is the source of Islam. And you can give us a call. We have a telephone number, uh, 1-877-Y-Islam. So if you have any question, any comments, even outside the open house, you can give us a call. How are you? Doing? So impressed. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm, I'm impressed with your scholarship. I'm impressed with your care. And thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming over here. Well, you're making a bigger bridge. I just want to thank you for that. See, we want to do something similar all over the USA. Yes, yeah. Because, you know, unfortunately, society is getting poisonous to some yes. extent. Yeah. Hate and discrimination and racism. Yeah. This is the least that we can do. Right? Right. No, just a personal, your personal comment, your personal testimony. That's good. Yeah, yes, thank you. Yes. Thank you. So Glad much. that you came. Come with your family next yeah. time. I'm not sure if you came with your family. No, no, just, she, my wife had a, just my <laughs> wife and I, but she had a. No, just came today. But I just want to thank you. Sure, sure. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Welcome. Enjoy the food. Yes. Allah. This is the call for prayer. God is great. God is great. Allah is great, Allah is great. I bear witness, there is no other God besides one God, Allah. I bear witness that there is only one God, Allah. I bear witness Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. I bear witness Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Come to prayer, come to prayer. to prayer. Come to your success. Come to your success. to your success. Allah is great, Allah is great. other God besides one God Allah. So that is the call for prayer that we Muslims do five times a day before we start the prayer. Some of you who may have visited Muslim countries, you may have noticed from the minarets, there would be call of prayer outside actually, right? So people who are working or working outside, they can listen to it, they can make preparations, so they can come in the mosque and they start praying. So we will also be heading uh, to the prayer area shortly. All of you can come and uh, join us. You can see us. It's a unique form of worship. Thank you.